So we have a pupil-centred approach at Cranbridge School. The pupil-centred approach is at, really at the heart of the school and it's, I feel it's, it's embedded um, in Cranbridge. Uh, it runs through everything. Um, we include um, the family, so parents, the child, multi-agencies, um, in planning for the child's provision and learning. Um, but it's not just a one-off uh, meeting that we would do, it would be a continuous uh, assessment that's ongoing so all the staff are really involved with the with the process um, and involving the children I think is really key. Um, it's a really simple thing to do as well, sometimes people think too much about it um, but it is really about the child so if you think of what's important to the child and what's important for the child I don't think you can go far wrong. Um, we also include things like strengths and challenges um, within our PCP meetings where we plan targets for the children. Um, we involve the parents again and ask them the question, what would be useful for you as a family and what would be useful for your child in helping them develop as an individual. And then we kind of go on from there in setting the targets and um, we track those throughout the year and I think that, that leadership has a really clear view on um, what that looks like and um, we track that and it is a continuous ongoing process like I said so um, we would look at that and if we need to make any necessary adjustments as the years going on for instance if the child's health was affected or there was something emotionally that we needed to so support them with additionally it is really a continuous continuously reviewed then um, and an ongoing process. In a PCP review we often involve uh, multi-agencies, so there could be physiotherapists involved, there could be health involved, uh, obviously the parents, there might be some information from educational psychologists that we use in the review and help them to plot targets, there could be input from speech and language. When the physios get involved we often look at um, MOVE because we're a MOVE accredited school, so we would look at how you could incorporate daily movement into the child's curriculum and then that's um, put in through planning. So the pupil centred approach then translated into the classroom practice. Um, every child in, in Cranbridge School has a one page profile. Um, the staff have input into the one page profiles. Again parents have input. The child with what's important to them. Um, we, we sort of incorporate pupil voice as well. So for some of the children that might be non-verbal I think that's very important so we might look at their engagement profiles and their communication charts um, and then within the classroom then that pupil centred planning and their, their individual education targets are incorporated into teaching and learning so um, those targets would flow throughout the lessons and teachers and support staff would look for every opportunity that they can for the child to practice each stage of the targets and targets are broken down into small manageable steps. So um, you would have step one, step two and step three which usually equates to term one, term two, term three. Um, and then you would work on those targets and, and we might be liaising with parents and, and professionals along the way to monitor the progress. And again with, within that um, uh, um, multi-agency approach we have a lot of speech and language input in school as well and support from uh, visually visual impairment services so so people are in school so they're not just present in the review they might be coming to the lessons with the children observing the children and then supporting our staff in making any necessary amendments to how they might be using a communication passport for instance or any additional things that they could do from a move perspective so it's a really continuous process even within the classroom practice I think in preparation for the new ALN Act, um, it, it, I think we have a really good practice in Cranbridge School. Um, I think having that multi-agency approach already, I feel like we're, we're already a step in the right direction. I think having that continuous communication throughout would, would also help in if there was any problems or disputes along the way that you would think that actually it wouldn't get to that stage because you'd already have that ongoing communication and you would be continuously problem solving to make sure that the child is achieving to their best possible potential really. 
So moving on from Crown Bridge, obviously we spent a very long time in embedding that um, pupil centre process throughout the school. Um, I think the key thing then is within the last two to three years of Crown Bridge School, then we hold a, 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 in our pupil centred planning meetings, then the next steps are identified. So we might look at, you know, through their engagement, through their pathways in school, through the, the, the path that they sort of follow, um, what placement would be more suitable, what they would be engaged in, what would help them progress further. And then again, we involve the parents, multi-agencies, the, the next step or the next setting that they go into. And um, we would plan with those people. They would come in and visit the children. They would very much become part of looking at their one-page profile. How would that be relevant in their next setting or within the, you know, their next experiences that they're moving forward?